So what do all the things that I have right here on the table have to do with each other? So I've always wondered how these um, liquid crystal sheets work. So you, you put your thumb on them and the heat from, from your, your hands um, can change the color. Like how does that work? Like knowing how color works. So uh, this is called a liquid crystal and the name suggests actually something about its state of matter. It's not a liquid and it's not a solid. It flows like a liquid, but it has a structure similar to solid. So it has regularly arranged molecules that go in layers, you know, this oriented in the same direction. So every layer of molecule has uh, same orientation and slowly the different layers rotate. And when they complete one full rotation, this is called the pitch. Okay. So when incident light comes through and hits um, this material, it actually diffracts from um, different layers. So when the material is hot, okay, the pitches I, I believe are, are higher. So the molecules are spinning faster. So it's actually uh, uh, going to different depth into the material and you're seeing an interference of only certain color. Okay. This is the same stuff that's in your electronic devices, your uh, LCD TVs, like most screens of um, cell phones nowadays and so forth. And the, the cheapest version of this material that you can buy is in these forehead thermometers um, that they sell at the pharmacies that um, kind of change color with temperature, obviously. Okay, so this is a type of thing called, uh, that's a, a part of a group of materials called thermoset materials. Okay, uh, you might have seen them in mood rings and sometimes you have these color changing mugs. So I have an example of one here and I just put a bunch of hot water in it. And um, um, if you wait a little bit, you're gonna see actually some writing come up. So we're just gonna leave the mug right here and, and see what happens. Yeah, you can start seeing some writing appear. Okay, um, so these uh, thermoset material, another thermoset material you're familiar with is actually your hair. Your hair is a polymer uh, made of pro proteins and that's why you can kind of reshape your hair at least temporarily with heat okay uh, so these liquid crystals um, are are pretty have very wide use nowadays so one thing is in uh, bulletproof uh, vests so bulletproof vests are made of liquid crystal polymer and the structure of that polymer is actually uh, similar to like tangled up uh, spaghetti, like very long molecules. And if you were to break the vest, you actually need to break, uh, if you need to break one molecule, you need to break all of them at once, which is why it works so well. Okay. Uh, another kind of polymer familiar to you, something else that is in a state of both liquid crystal and... Uh, Turn the liner and um, it, 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 that, that's in a state of between liquid and a crystal is uh, silly pudding okay and you can get all kinds of silly pudding nowadays this one is a glow-in-the-dark one which uh, is sold as magic putty they have thinking putties I don't know what that one does uh, my favorite one is the magnetic one okay this one if you put a very strong neodymium magnet you can like see it in uh, real time how it's being swallowed by but so um, silly putties are silicon polymers and they're in the rubbery flow regime so what's interesting about these um, uh, these materials that are in this in-between state of a liquid and a crystal is that they don't have the states of matter that you're typically familiar with so they don't just exist in a solid, liquid, and gas. So for instance, your plastic bag is a polymer, okay? Um, and your plastic bag, if you put it at a temperature of minus 127 degrees Celsius would enter its glass state. So it's gonna be completely solid and rigid, okay? We can't really make that happen, but at room temperature, it's pretty pliable and plasticky. So very neat.